Okay, so in this segment of the video, we're going to talk about this function declaration and this call to add action for a particular hook name. And I'm going to go ahead and down here, I'm just going to go ahead and clear this out just to avoid any confusion right now. We're just working with this particular section for right now. Okay, now here at this, this first line of code, this is a comment. I'm going to go ahead and take this out too because that was just a comment. Okay, you can pull it right out. It's just there to clarify what this is doing. This call to add action is always going to be given a parameter here, the very first parameter specifying a particular hook name that the action will be added to. Okay, now how did I come up with this name? Okay, if you remember earlier in the video, here in the custom reg fields file, I'm going to switch tabs here. This was the action that we decided was the best one to hook into in order to affect these variables at the point at which they are defined at right here at the top of the function. And you can see that this, this do action call is calling this hook name. Okay, so this is where we receive the hook name and I just copied that and I brought it over. I'm going to change tabs again. I brought it over and this is where I'm adding an action to that hook by name. And then I'm telling WordPress to hook my function, which I'm calling my dynamic field options, to that action. So that, I'm going to switch tabs again, so that whenever S2 member does that action, if any custom processing routines are hooked onto it, they will be fired right here at the point at which the action is, is called upon. Okay? Now, it's my job, once I attach that action, that my own function to this hook, it's my job now to define that function, my dynamic field options that I've given to WordPress. If I don't, then a PHP error would be generated. Okay, so this is where I'm declaring this function. Okay, and really I could take all of this out and I would get no errors. As long as this function exists when it's fired upon, it doesn't actually have to do anything. It just has to exist in order not to generate errors. Okay, but obviously we want it to do something. So this is where this code comes in. Now you'll also notice here, whenever I define the function, I'm also defining the parameters that I want my function to receive or that I'm expecting to receive. Now earlier in the video we discussed the fact that S2 member will always pass in an array of defined variables in the scope of the function at the point at which the hook is called. So here you see in my custom reg fields file where S2 member is passing through this array of get defined vars. It's passing through an array of variables along with references to those variables. So my function is going to, is going to call those variables vars. Okay, now I could call this whatever I wanted to. This could be JSON. It really doesn't matter. You can Whenever you create your routine, you can call those references by whatever name you like. For clarity, I'm just using vars. It's a nice short name, makes it easy to work with. Okay, so here in this first line of my custom routine, what I want to do is I want to get a nice easy reference to the field variable. Okay, and uh, if you look at this routine here in the custom reg fields file, you will see that this would be the variable or the array, this field array that I want to work with. This is what I want to modify. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, field equals the reference of vars refs field. Okay, and you don't have to understand how all of this works right now. After you've worked with S2 member for a while and you've experimented, you'll get you'll get uh, to a better understanding of what we're actually doing here. Okay, and I'm going to post this code in the forum under the common questions section so that everyone has access to the actual code that I'm working with here and you can experiment with it for yourself. Okay, so here I've got a field variable reference. So if I change the field in this routine, it is going to affect the remaining routine that S2 member utilizes after your function has call, been called through the, the, through the hook. Okay, so that's perfect. It allows me to set the options here, as you see here. I'm checking here to see, okay, are we dealing with the field with an ID of country code? 
And if we are, I'm going to change the options value, the options index on the field array to something that's completely different than what it was. Okay, now in this example, I've just hard-coded in U.S., United States, these different options just like you would see in the UI panel for S2 member. And here, just to give you a little more detail, this is saying, okay, field options equals, okay, United, U.S., United States default, followed by a new line. That's what the back to, uh, forward slash N is. And then... Here I'm saying field options dot equals, and that's just to say that we're going to add something to what it already is. So we're not, in other words, normally when you assign a variable value, you're resetting the value. Here when you have dot equals, you're adding this to the value already contained by this variable. So in other words, we're leaving this in there. So in other words, we're having this in one line, creating a new line, adding CA Canada, creating a new line, then adding VI Virgin Islands US. Okay, so let's save this and I'm going to switch back to my browser here and I'm going to go over to my registration form. Now this is what I had in originally was Mexico with just one option. That's what's configured in the UI panel. Okay, but now that I have that custom processing routine in place, if I refresh the page, you will see now I have United States, Canada, and Virgin Islands. Okay, so that's perfect. That allows me to fill the option values available in this dropdown through PHP code. Okay, I'm going to switch back to my code editor. Now in this demonstration, I have hard coded in these values by just writing, hard coding meaning I am writing them right in here in string format. Of course, if you were doing it, you could pull the values from a database and your code might be a lot more advanced than mine is here in this particular section because you might be doing a database query, formulating uh, this, this options value uh, in a much more advanced way where the data that's being populated into the dropdown comes from an, an outside source, maybe from a database file, maybe from a third-party application through an API call. Who knows what you might be able to do? Okay, so this is a very powerful technique, and there is one additional technique that allows you to set which one is going to be the default. Now you notice here how I have this little extra flag on the end. That's telling me that I want United States to be the default. So that's very simple. So in the case of a dropdown, that's all you have to do. So for example, if I take this out of this line and I move it down here to Canada, now Canada becomes the default option. So let's save this and see how that works. Switch back to my registration panel here. And let's just go right here and reload this page and take a look. Wouldn't you know it? There's Canada. So that works beautifully. Okay, so I'm going to post this in the forum. I hope it assists uh, someone out there. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to write in. We'll be happy to answer them.